Peter just talked, and right on the name badge, you know, Ken Strong says right on there, but she saw Scott City, so she <laughs> finally about three quarters of the year went by and she said, uh, Debbie, uh, my name is Ken. <laughs> <laughs> so I goofed this morning and I, I did call uh, Chris here, uh, Phil, and I said, that's Phil, right? And uh, so anyways, but so the name thing kind of gets uh, goofed up once in a while, but praise God. Um, I do want to share something with you real quickly before I share my testimony. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, I know the word will be a blessing to you. But um, also this testimony, because it's from the Lord, of course, it's all Him. But in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, uh, For we wrestle not, verse 12, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, darkness, spiritual wickedness, and high places, etc. We all know that, don't we? Well, um, I was talking to the Lord about this. I thought, you know, Lord, why is it when we come to church, people fall asleep? And right away I'm thinking, well, the pastor's boring. No, 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 wait a second. The Word of God is powerful, isn't it? It's quick, powerful, sharp, and any to it, sort of, et cetera. I mean, it just changes our life because Jesus said, my words are life to those that find them, health to all their flesh. And people need healing in their body. People need the Word of God in their life to change them, to make them victorious. Isn't that right? But yet they'll come to church and, and uh, fall asleep. You know, I'm not talking about all the time. But I'm, I'm an associate pastor at our church, and I'm also the youth pastor. And uh, I watch our youth on Sunday mornings. Man, they just cuddle up next to mom and dad, and they just lean that head, boom, and go to sleep. And I thought, why is that? Is it because the church is so peaceful, because the presence of God is there? And then I was reminded of the story of Jesus when he's going to, uh, having that prayer of consecration in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he, he, he brought his disciples with him. And he began to pray because he's heavy, he is grievous. And he came back and, and he told them to watch and pray with him. Do you remember that story? And he came back and what were they doing? They were sleeping. But do you think that sleep was their answer? Do you think that sleep was their answer? You know, Jesus knows us, doesn't he? The Bible says he was tempted always just like us, but without sin. So he knows all, of, all the, in, the, the feelings of our infirmities. He knows all about us, doesn't he? He identified with us on the cross. Well, Jesus, knowing they were tired, shouldn't he have said, well, you guys get some rest after all. If you, if you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. He didn't. He practically kicked them. Get up. Watch and pray. Can't you pray one hour? You need to pray lest you fall into temptation. He was trying to tell them something. He was trying to tell them the hour had come and things were happening or are about to happen. And if they didn't pray, they were going to fall. They were going to miss it. And that's exactly what happened to them. Yeah. Amen? Well, let me tell you something. The body of Christ, and of course you all probably can acknowledge this, the body of Christ is sleeping out there. It's sad but true. Yeah. Now think about this. Now, they're sleeping... God is wanting us to touch lives with yes. his power. Yes. Okay, He's wanting us to bring light. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. How many of you are still single here, uh, guys? Any single guys here? Okay. Now, I'd be willing to bet money if they were going out on a date, they would shine their car. They'd wax them, you know, make them look really good. And I remember my brother, he had a, a 1976 Type LT Camaro, and he'd wax that thing all the time, you know? It had that nice spoiler on it. Some of you remember it had an 8-track player in it, man. Wow, 8-track. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all right. And he'd shine that car. Man, the wheels, everything, it was so shiny. Well, that's how God wants us to be as a light, so shiny. Let your light so shine, not just a little bit, but let it really shine Amen. so people will glorify God to say, my gosh, what happened to you? Well, I got a hold of Jesus. Well, I want some. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Well, the devil's doing all he can to keep us from being all we can be in him. Okay, it's his job. His job description is John 10, 10. Kill, steal, and destroy. Okay, that's what the devil does. That's his job. He's good at it. He's very good at it. In fact, the Bible says he's seeking those whom he may devour. Do you know that Jesus' job description was to destroy the works of the devil? Well, actually, it wasn't that really. It was that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came that he might. Now, why does it say might? Because that word might denotes permission. We have to allow Jesus Christ to come in and destroy the works of the devil in our life. And that's why it says Satan is seeking whom he may devour. You have to give him permission to devour. God told me this. He said, my children are not victims by circumstance. They are victors by choice. Glory to God. When we choose 
To be victors, we are. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he, the Word of God says. Amen? All right, now back to this scripture. The reason I'm talking about this, our flesh gets tired. Some of you maybe didn't get much sleep last night. The storm might have woke you. It did me, okay? And uh, a couple times <laughs> it did. And we have storms, and we have snow, and we're, we're from Minnesota, so we get like snowstorms, you know, like you, you know, two feet, yeah, easily. And, and, and this last winter was the first winter I didn't have to get up on my roof and shovel. Okay, we shovel all, the roofs all the time up there. But, but anyways, this storm was pretty bad. It woke me, and... Um, I could say I'm really tired this morning, you know, and just relax. But I want to tell you something. There is a spirit behind your flesh. And it is not the Holy Spirit, and it is not your human spirit. It is spiritual wickedness. And here's something. During praise and worship time, when it's time to worship the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a minister on staff, and, and I'm kind of like Gary. You know, he does administrative stuff, and, 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 you know, the treasurer, Mary, and all these different ones who do things, which is so cool that you've got an awesome staff here and the youth pastor, et cetera. But, you know, we're, we're busy sometimes, and I get busy, and I'll be standing there, and they're leading praise and worship, and, and, and I'll just mouth the words, you know. And I remember the scripture where Jesus said, you praise me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. And, I, oh, that hurts. Oh, yeah, that's right, Jesus, this is your time. But I'm thinking, okay, did we get the bulletins done? Or, or did we get that monthly report done? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about? Or, or some of you might be thinking, man, we got that roast in the oven. I hope pastor's not going to be long today. You know? Isn't that right? And prayer meeting time, when there's a prayer line, God forbid one more person come up to the prayer line after the prayer line was called and done. Oh, sit down, will you? Or, or maybe, does anybody else have a prayer request at prayer time? And, uh, uh, you know, everybody's hoping nobody says anything, because then it'll be done. It'll be over. You know? And sister so-and-so, well, I'd like you to pray. In the oh, man, we're going to be here all night. You know what I'm talking about? And we think it's flesh. We think it's just our flesh. That's the sad part. That's where the body is sleeping because we believe that the flesh is controlling us. And so we come to church and we're really tired from last night. And it's okay to snooze, but if you snooze, you lose. See, God will make sure that the word comes to you that will change your life. There'll be times something will be preached from maybe the most unlikely person and it will change your life. A nugget of revelation or truth will come and it will change your life. But if we allow our flesh to dominate us and let our flesh be the excuse, and, and if there was no spirit behind it, it'd be okay. Every one of us today, if we were tired, we could just decide to sleep. It'd be okay. It really would because we would allow the flesh to justify sleeping. We'd allow our flesh not to enter into the presence of God where there's peace, where there's joy. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. Well, hey, if you're tired, let's get in the presence of God. Let's get our strength, okay? Well, anyways... If we allow our flesh, if it was just our flesh and we allow our flesh to dominate us, that, that, you know, that would be fine. Well, it really wouldn't be fine. But the truth of the matter, there's a spirit behind our flesh, and that's what I want you to see this morning. Don't allow yourself to go to sleep. I, I tell you what, I believe God's going to do some awesome things this morning. It's him. I want you to know something. I am nobody. I was an idiot before Christ. So if I look like one now, I don't care. <laughs> it really doesn't matter to me. And, and I, I love you, but I really don't care what you think. I'm going to leave here today. I love your pastors. I do care what they think, you know. <laughs> And I don't mean that in any kind of bragging way. I'm nothing without Christ. You understand my heart here, my heart here, okay? But I know he wants to do some awesome things. But whenever you come to church, Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, prayer meetings, man, just kick in. Realize that the devil's going to do everything he can to distract you, to deceive you, to kill, steal, and destroy, and keep you from getting the very thing that God wants for you. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Write that scripture down, Ephesians 6, 12. That's what we wrestle against, not flesh and blood. That's not flesh. Wake up, flesh. No, there's a spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we wrestle against, folks. So when your body's tired and words being preached, just, you know what, glory to God, I'm not going to allow my flesh to be tired. No, Satan, you're not going to have my flesh today. You're not going to rule my flesh. Do you understand what I'm saying? And see, it makes it easier for you as a believer to understand who the enemy is. The enemy's not your flesh. Even though your flesh may be tired, there's a spirit behind it. You understand? And I'm not one of those ones that want to cast a demon out of a doorknob. You understand what I'm saying? But the devil is real. He has a real job description. He's real good at it. And glory to God, don't let him get the best of you. Amen? Praise God. Okay, I'm going to share with you what, what the Lord has done for me. Anybody here 17 years old? Any teens? Yes. Just the guy. Can you stand up for a second, please? Please. Just, and you don't have to come up. You can just stand right there. Take a look at this fellow, okay? 
Now, I was not as good looking as him when I was 17, okay? And maybe not as tall. How tall are you? About six? Okay, yep, I was about 5'11". Okay, you can sit down. When I was that fellow's age right there, right there, I was playing my piano at home, practicing. And I wish I could play like Pastor Ken or Nancy, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> but I was practicing anyways. And all of a sudden, I just started beating on the keys, almost breaking them and crying like a little, little child. And my folks wonder what was wrong with me, and I, I don't know what I did. I must have stormed off. And, and uh, I didn't know Jesus. I came from uh, uh, a background that, that believed in, uh, you know, uh, well, I was Catholic. That was my background, okay? And, and we weren't, I wasn't real faithful to go to church. I went at least once a year, and that was midnight mass to get out of the house, okay? And um, we had this picture of Jesus in our hallway, the bleeding heart, you know, the sacred heart. And I remember coming home drunk or stoned. I used to do that pot thing, you know, and other stuff. And looking at that picture, and you know, that picture was real condemning to me. And I would sneak by, you know, to get in my bedroom. Because I didn't know anything about him. I really didn't. And I did not understand as a young man, 17, that that little baby Jesus from the nativity scene grew up to be a man and he died for me. I didn't know. I had no idea that he died for my sins. They didn't teach me that, that I could be forgiven. They didn't teach me that, that uh, I didn't have to be a down and outer all my life. You, you know what I'm saying? I just felt like a failure. Walked around with the weight of sin on me. And uh, anyways, I ended up going nuts. I was 17 years old, and uh, I ended up with a brain tumor and a stomach ulcer, real bad stomach ulcers. The brain tumor, of course, being the major thing. It was the base of my brain, made me nuts. And I did some really nasty things, cussed out my father who was bigger than me at the time and could have whipped me and didn't because he seen in my eyes that I wasn't there. He said, he said, you know, I knew it wasn't you, Clay. I just knew it wasn't you. So anyways, for two and a half months, I am, well, actually, they, they took me to this place called uh, Porter Stark. And it was a, it's a uh, health care facility for, for the mentally handicapped or whatever you want to call it, okay? And I remember going in, it's like I could see through my eyes them showing me around, and I seen these rib cord bedspreads, two of them in a little closet in between, you know. And I, I'm really not aware of what's happening except for I could see. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know how to explain it, but I just could see. And then they took me downstairs to a um, pool, you know, where they had a pool table, etc. And apparently I started grabbing pool balls and whipping them, throwing them. Then I hit an orderly and uh, did some really violent things. And so they strapped me down right away and they called the police. And uh, they put me in this two-story room. And I do remember this room. I don't know why they were putting me there. But I just remember being in this room. And uh, I, had a, I had a little bit of karate training, not much, you know, so don't challenge me, OK? <laughs> but I, I somehow <laughs> jumped up, kicked the window, and it flew open. I remember that. The next thing I know, I'm on the window ledge like this, looking down. And then all I seen was black, nothing but black. Boom. Now, my folks. Um, are signing the papers to allow the police officers to escort me to a lockup facility. And while they are signing the papers, in walks their boy, front door. You know, I want you to know something. I was nuts. Let me see if I can do this. You know, the whites of the eyes showing, you know, just gone, you know. And uh, I was really crazy then. I'm crazy about the Lord now. But, but anyways, um, I walk in, and they're signing the papers. Now, parents, this is your son, teenager's age son, 17 years old, walks in after they just took him to lock up your, or, or, or to the room. You're already upset that things went really bad. And here I come walking in. Well, of course, they grabbed me right away, and my ankles, I do remember my ankles hurting, and I don't remember my parents. That's really odd, but I don't. I do remember the nurse talking to me, and I don't know what I said, but my ankles were killing me from that, that jump, that two-story jump. The next thing I know, I am being dragged into this hospital on a bed with two leather straps holding me to this bed. And they put me in this room, and um, I don't know if any of you have ever been high on marijuana before, but this was worse than the best high you could have gotten with that paranoia where somebody gets in your face and you're like, wow, get away from me, kind of thing, okay? And I'm just telling you, I'm trying to describe it. was just odd. It was weird. And I want you to know something. Don't go condemning me. I didn't know the Lord. I had no hope in my life. I had no plan. I had no destiny. I had no eternity in my life. Understand? So to me, I just live life as it came every day. Okay? So, anyways, they had me strapped down, and I'm just paranoid in fear, total fear. Don't know why I'm strapped down, and I'm rattling that, you know, those bed things they put up on the side that to hold you in in case you roll over. 
unraveling this thing and just a nervous wreck. They bring me in there, and I don't remember how many days I was down like that, but I do remember this big uh, fellow strapping me down to the bed with these leather straps. And time, you know, every day, I mean, I remember getting up and um, some weird guy looking at me, you know? He was, too. He's just like me, you know, I was just like them. But, but you know, you ever seen a crazy person? You know how they look, don't you? That's crazy. So anyways, here I am. Well, meanwhile, my mom and dad um, go to desperate measures, and they turn on the TV to the religious channel. And uh, there's a fellow there who a lot of folks condemn today, and they should have been praying for him, but regardless, uh, Jim Baker prayed this prayer at the end of their, this back in 78, they prayed this prayer at the end of their, the PTL club. They prayed the sinner's prayer. And my folks got down on their knees and prayed that sinner's prayer. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And you know, they did that every night. <laughs> Being the good Catholics, they were, we, we kind of repeat things a little bit, you know. <laughs> Didn't catch the first time, you know. <laughs> it's like that fellow that always goes up and, and uh, for prayer, you know, and, and uh, the, the, the lady says to the guy, don't, don't pray for him, he's got a leak, you know. <laughs> so, you know, they keep getting the same line. Well, anyways, my folks are praying that every night. And so, anyways, they got saved. Praise God. It was awesome how, how God saved them. And uh, my uncle, meanwhile, had gotten saved. And, and uh, I have an uncle who, who was at the charter class at Ramah who, uh, who was a rich man, very rich man in Indiana where I lived, built houses, had a big construction company, and he and his family decided to retire early and move to Florida, and they bought one of them puppy palaces, you know, those uh, puppy stores, you know, and he invested all his money into this one big thing that was just going to really make them even more wealthy, and he lost every penny of it. But Jesus got a hold of him in his desperation, and somehow he ended up going to Ramah, and he sent my dad this book called The Authority of the Believer. Now it's called The Believer's Authority, but back then it was called The Authority of the Believer book. And my dad read the book, the part about where a believer, somebody who's believed in Jesus, Mark chapter 16, starting with verse 15, it says that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out demons, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll lay hands on the sick, and sick shall recover. Uh, they drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt them, etc. You know what I'm talking about? And so he got a hold of that, big time. Well, he came to visit me. I don't even remember it. But he laid his hands on me, and he said, uh, Jesus, I, I just ask you to heal my boy. And that's all he did, lay his hands on me. And uh, he left. Then, uh, I don't know how, how much time, I think it was about a week or something had passed. But during this week, my mother had a dream that I came in the door, opened the door, and my hair was white, just glowing with the glory of God. I said, Mom, I'm home. And that same time, my sister had a dream that I was sitting on Jesus' lap, smiling, but my hair was white. Now I had hair back then, okay? Now I loosed it and let it go. Glory. Okay? But back then, I was hanging on to it. I fi figured I needed it. And uh, anyways, it was white. But that's where the problem was in my head. Well, anyways, my dad come to visit me. And all I could remember is Jesus came into my room. And I don't remember seeing him necessarily, but just knowing he was there. Here I am at a guy who actually prayed the sinner's prayer at a, at a carnival one time before, didn't know what I was doing. Didn't even know I was saved. But Jesus came to my room, and uh, one of the things that was said was, have no fear. You know what? I was just so full of fear. No fear. Just had no fear. And it left. And I don't even remember how this all transpired. This is really something, but it's so cool because it's so real. My dad came to visit me, and I said, Dad? Jesus came, and I, I want you to understand something. I, I wasn't talking up until that point. At least nothing understandable. Two and a half months passed, okay? And I said, Dad, Jesus came in my room last night and healed me. He looked at me, and you know, he's a very new believer. <laughs> and I said, okay. Kind of left. And uh, then he saw that orderly, this big guy who strapped me down. He said, Mr. Glassford, he said, I'm the guy who strapped your son down to the bed. And he says, I don't understand it, he says, but we had a normal conversation today for the first time in two and a half months. So my dad's contemplating this, okay, okay, good. Well, anyways, uh, the psychiatrist comes in to see me. He was a uh, Filipino guy, so I had a hard time understanding him <laughs> because of his accent. And he, um, 
I told him, I said, Jesus came to my room last night and healed me. He said, yeah, I've seen your kind come and go. He says, I'll tell you what, you stop taking that medicine I'm giving you, you'll be back here within a year easily. I said, no. I said, you don't understand. Jesus came in my room last night and healed me. He said, you'll be back. Well, apparently he said, let's really check this thing out. And he told my dad, take me home for the weekend. And I want you to understand something. I was in lockup. They have like four different levels in this church. It's Dyer Mercy Hospital, if you want to check it out, in Indiana. But the lockup is the, 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 it's a hallway with a bunch of rooms, nothing in it. And then one little booth with, with uh, like a banker's booth where they keep your razor, your cigarettes, and all that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, two orderlies walking the halls and, and taking care of everybody. And, and then they have a room where you can watch TV. And that was lockup. And then the next phase, they actually let you go down to occupational therapy and things like that, let you make belts and things like that, OK? So anyways, I was in the extreme. And now, all of a sudden, he's going to let them take me home. I didn't even move to the next level. He said, take me home for the weekend and see how he does. So anyways, uh, my dad was on his way home. And uh, I skipped a part here. My dad was on his way home. And my mom gets the call from the psychiatrist. And she yells out the door, um, Dad, that's what she called my, my, my father. She said, Dad, uh, they said, go ahead and pick up Clay and come home for the weekend. And on the way to the hospital, he heard an audible voice in the back seat said, son, you wanted me to heal your son, and I did. And he said, what? And he looked back, and no one was there. But all of a sudden, it came from the inside this time and said, son, you wanted me to heal your son, and I did. And he said, he almost pulled the car over and did a jig in the road. You know, he's just so excited. He knew that he knew. He finally got the, the realization or the revelation that Jesus healed his boy. See, and he heard, all, he heard me say that Jesus healed me, but it just kind of freaked him out. So he came, picked me up, and I remember this. I said, Dad, get me out of here, man. There's a bunch of weirdos here. <laughs> here they were my buddies. We went dancing on the hall. They're coming to take us away, you know. <laughs> and, then, and then after Jesus touched me, he was like, get away from me, you know. What am I doing here? <laughs> so uh, I just want to tell you something, too. When a person is crazy, uh, which I was, I didn't know it, <laughs> so... Don't feel sorry for him. Just pray for him. You know, you didn't have to feel sorry for me. I was nuts. You know, except if I'm going to hell, that wouldn't be good. But, but I mean, uh, I really didn't know I was nuts. I was just gone. But when Jesus healed me, I, I was thinking, what am I doing here? This is crazy. So he brought me home, and right there in the driveway, he said to me, he said, son, he said, you know the Lord healed you, didn't you? I said, yeah. Um, he said, we can either go get this medicine, and uh, they were... Uh, Downers, the way I knew them as. Uh, Roach 15 was a brand, and, and they'd put normal people to sleep, just one. But they went me, and I was, you know, like this. And he, he told me, he said, son, he says, you know, we can go get the medicine. He says, but you know God healed you, so what would you choose? I said, no, God healed me. I, I don't need that stuff. I don't want to take that stuff. So didn't take the medicine, and uh, sitting there in the driveway, and he said, son, he says, so would you like to leave, uh, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And, and you got to understand something. I didn't know at the time before that I, what I'd done. But this time I knew I needed to receive Jesus as my Savior. And he led me right to the Lord, right in the car. Do you want to know something? I get out of the car before him, run in the house, and open the door and say, Mom, I'm home. Just like in a dream. And my mom is just this little Japanese woman. She's four foot eight, and met my dad during the Korean War. And uh, she was just a nervous wreck. Now, if you put yourself in her place, she came from another country, and she's li living in the United States. And, and, and she wouldn't even teach us kids Japanese. She was so ashamed of being a J Japanese. And understanding when she came over here, it's understandable why she would have felt that way. But she was a nervous wreck. She left mom and dad and everybody in, in another country to come here. And so she was always sick, just always sick. She had a, a, a Tupperware-like thing this size, you know, just full of medicine. If any of us ever had an ailment, she had it. Oh, son, you need an antibiotic. Her mama got an infection. Oh, here, I got some antibiotics. You know, you know what I'm saying? She was a medicine cat. My friends, well, that I used to hang out with, loved to come and check in the medicine cabinet because they could find all kind of goodies, or at least they thought they were goodies. But she said this, and I thought this was pretty awesome, and, and I wouldn't recommend anybody do this unless they get a revelation from the Lord. She said, you know, Jesus, you healed my son. I know you, you can heal me too. Took every one of the bottles him down the toilet, flushed, gone. And you know, my mom's a little fireball. She's a prayer warrior. She's one of them intercessors like this. Uh, uh, Miss Lillian, is it? Yeah. Yes. 
Glory to God. Thank God for prayer warriors. <laughs> and uh, glory to God, Jesus healed her. And she's still walking in that healing power today. And she's a fireball. And uh, Ken knows my family really well. My dad's a little bit on the wild side. I guess it's somewhat rubbed off for some reason. But uh, anyways, <laughs> God, I, mean, I mean wild for the Lord. He's wild for the Lord. But God totally healed me. Gone. Tumor gone. My dad didn't take me back to the uh, lockup facility. And they called and said, Mr. Glassford, if you don't bring your son here uh, within 24 hours, your insurance will be canceled. And, you know, think about it. Man, he's got insurance because we worked in the steel mill. Good insurance. And uh, back then, that was in 78. The bill was over 10000 bucks, which doesn't seem like a lot of money now, but it actually was back then. And he had to make a choice. And he never took me back. I never went back. He said, son, you want to go back? I said, no, I don't want to go back there. Why? Jesus has healed me. And I want to tell you something. You know, a lot of folks don't realize that God is still moving today, but he yes. is. Yes. The same God who healed then is healing today. Yes, he is. You know, he didn't look down and see this 17-year-old scrawny-looking guy, and I was scrawny at the time. And I said I wasn't as good-looking as this fellow, and it's true. But um, he didn't say, well, there's clay over there. I should heal him because, you know, he's really somebody. No. I'll tell you what happened. I, I will bet money he, he, he talked to uh, Gabriel. Hey, Gabe, what, what's that noise I'm hearing down there? Somebody's using the name. What name? Jesus. Well, what do they want? Healing. Give it to them. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody used that name. Glory to God, the name of Jesus. And I want to tell you something. I remember being a sinner and hearing the name Jesus, and it would give me the jitters every time. You know what I mean? Not a good jitter, a bad one. But you could talk to me about God. You could talk about Buddha. You could talk about all kinds of stuff. But don't mention that name. I don't know why. I don't know who he is. But when you say that name, it makes me queasy. But all of a sudden now I got a hold of that name and I began to speak that name to my friends and tell them, Jesus healed me. Ooh, they, you know, you know, I lost a lot of friends. The ones I used to get high with and get stoned with, my best buddies who we'd walk down, you know, the road drunk, I love you, man. Yeah, I love you too. You know, how guys act foolish when they're drunk. Huh? Well, let me tell you something. God wants you drunk on the Holy Ghost yeah. so you lose your inhibitions also so you'll be free Willing to share Jesus with others. Amen? God showed me this. He showed me this wobbly wine glass. And he says, I want my kids to be wobbly wine glasses. I said, wobbly wine glass? What do you mean? Well, you get filled up with my spirit, with the new wine, and you walk around uninhibited, wobbling around, drunk with the Holy Ghost. And I don't mean being foolish. You understand what I'm saying? But, but uninhibited where you, you don't care what somebody thinks about you. And you share the good news. You share that name, Jesus. You understand? You share the good news, Jesus set me free. And you spill out here and you spill out there. And the next day you get up and you do it again, you get filled up again. But there's some folks that are empty wine glasses and they're just walking around and wondering why life is such a drag. And it's like, man, you know, when Jesus saved you, I was depressed and I got saved. Glory to God. Christians have no business being depressed. I'm sorry, but they don't. We really don't. God has got a plan and a purpose for every one of us. There's not a one of us here by accident. I don't care how you got here physically. You're not an accident. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. He's placed gifts on the inside of you to touch other people's lives. He's put us here to be a light. If we'd realize our job description is the same as Jesus, that we might destroy the works of the devil. I'll tell you what, it destroys the works of the devil when you pray for people and they get healed, doesn't it? I mean, it just blows their mind when people get healed. It blew my doctor's mind. I haven't seen him since 1978. He's not my doctor anymore, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I quit him. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something. Stay filled up with the Holy Ghost. Stay filled up with his power. Yeah. Stay filled up with his life and his light and be the light God's called you to be. And God will start using you. But I'll tell you what happens. People aren't allowing him uh, to use them. And because of that, they're not seeing much happen in their lives. My wife and I got a hold of some word here. That's changed your life. I want to talk to you real quickly. Are we doing okay on time here? Okay. Something that just changed my life. Um, more so, I should say. See, God did a supernatural thing with me. But he's done a supernatural thing with every one of you, too. I mean, how many of you would really want to have a brain tumor? Anybody here? No. Right, no thanks. You don't need it. 
Thank God you're smarter than I. You received before you got so goofed up, maybe. <laughs> well, regardless, like I said, I was an idiot before, and so it really doesn't bother me what people think necessarily now. And so I can go around being uninhibited, so to speak. I, I shared with my friends that Jesus healed me, and, and one of them just got red in the face, and I can't believe that stuff. And this was my best friend before Ken. Best friend. And he got red in the face and drove off and just didn't want to have anything to do with me anymore. The other guy who was a good friend, I shared Jesus with him, got him saved, got his wife saved, got his wife's uh, knee healed. She had some knee problems. I said, well, man, Jesus will heal that. Come here. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Stepped on it. Wow. <laughs> That's what he does. He's the healer. And I want to tell you something. Healing always comes, folks. When hands are laid on people in that name, healing always comes. It's the receiving part. It really is. That's right. And I'm not here to condemn anybody, but just go to God and say, God, I went up for prayer, and for some reason the physical manifestation hadn't come. Is it me? How about us looking at ourselves? You know, if a person has a problem with, uh, with, with uh, Bob, or, and, and Bob has a problem with Jill, and Bob has a problem with Maggie, and Bob has a problem with Mike, and Bob has a problem with Joe, who's the problem? Bob. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See? And maybe you've had a problem. You went to Brother Copeland's healing line, went to Brother Higgins' healing line, went to Brother Ken's healing line, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they're not the problem. Maybe all them preachers aren't so bad. You know, well, they just had some more anointing in their life. Wait a minute. Where does the Bible talk about that anyways? It says, the believers will lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Amen? So the sick have a part to play, don't they? Amen. I want to talk to you real quickly. Ken, is there some part of that testimony I didn't share? Did you recall? God, God. What's that? Oh, that's right. Yes, it was. It was supposed to kill me. And, oh, yeah, I, I guess I didn't go through that. Um, they had to x-ray me anyways to make sure that thing, you know, wasn't going to explode or whatever. And they wanted to operate. Yeah, I, I, I did. Boy, it's been a while since I've shared that. But they wanted to operate, and they called my dad. Um, be, well, I was still nuts, okay? They called my dad and said, Mr. Glass, we're going to operate on your son tomorrow. He's got a brain tumor. And he hung up that phone. He says, dear, I'm not going to cut my, my kid's head open. You're not going to do that. And he wouldn't authorize them to operate. And then the Lord came in and changed things. All that had happened. So I'm, I apologize. I didn't get that part. But later on, they did one of those, um, I don't know if they're called a CT scan, but you go in that tunnel. Maybe they're called it. CAT scan. There you go. Thank you. And... Uh, you know, they were amazed. It just disappeared. Wow. What a coincidence, Woo! huh? Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, it's been uh, since 1978. Let's see, that's uh, 20 years ago? Yeah, it's been over 20 years now. It's because it was in February. And I, I haven't had any problems. <laughs> but uh, there, I feel better. No, I'm kidding. I haven't had any problems. Glory to God. Jesus totally healed me. No stomach ulcers. Man, I had so, such bad stomach ulcers all the time. But God healed me totally. And he doesn't do a halfway job. He does it all the way. Amen. I want to talk to you real quickly about uh, something the Lord showing up, showed, showed us uh, about the word. Turn your Bibles real quickly, if you would, please. Proverbs chapter 3, and I'll be done in just a second, okay? But the, Proverbs chapter 3, and it's going to talk about acknowledging the supernatural in your life. God wants you to see the supernatural in your life every day. And my, my wife and I have been seeing the supernatural happen in our life every single day. It's incredible. It's so fun serving the Lord. It's fun giving him the credit. He deserves every bit. I'm telling you, it is. Listen to this. Verse 1. My son, don't forget my law or my word, but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they'll add to you. How many of you think days go by so fast sometimes? It's like, man, we just had more time. Anybody? Can I see that? Hand? Good. Okay. Yep. Yes, I see that hand. Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, I see that hand. Okay. He said, if you'll put his word in and not forget it, he will lengthen your days. Yes. Now, that doesn't mean give you longer life because the very next thing says, and long life. He will lengthen your days. If you will begin to put him first, like he said in Matthew 6, seek him first and his righteousness and all these things that the Gentiles seek, man, the boats, the cars, the clothes, the hairdos, he'll give to you. You know, he's interested in blessing his children. God delights in the prosperity of his children. Okay? Well, anyways, he says, if you'll keep my words, I'll lengthen your days. You know, wherever you need them lengthened. Maybe you've got this project at the office you've got to get done. 
But you know what? He will lengthen your days. It'll give, some of you, I'm sure have had this happen, where you were just sure it was lunchtime, and you got a lot done that day, maybe at work or at home, and you looked at the clock, and it's only like 10. Anybody ever have that happen? That's God lengthening your days. He'll do that for you, but, it, but you've got to do something to keep that going. You've got to put his word in and keep his word. And peace they'll add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Keep, keep allowing God's mercy to flow in and through you. And his truth, walk in integrity. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Anybody here want good success? Yeah. I do. Glory to God. And favor. God wants to give you favor and good success. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now it goes on to say, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with some. Plenty. I started reading that and thought, God, you know, I want my barn filled with plenty. You know, because it's awful selfish of me just to have my needs met. I want to meet the needs of others. That's right. What can I do to do that? And so in this verse, this is what popped out at me. And, and I know we'll, we'll bless you. But he says in verse uh, 6, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. And so what my wife and I have been doing, every time God does something in our life, we say to each other, that's the favor of God. The other day we, we, we rented a car, because so, we were going down to a seminar, we had to come here, a lot of traveling to do. So we rented a vehicle. And they were going to give us a full-size car. We're really excited. We'll get to get a you know, full-size car from Alamo. And their full-size car is a Chevy Lumina. That's full-size? That's like the size of a Pinto. Those of you remember those? OK. And that was their full-size. So I thought, OK, well, I'm going to upgrade to a premium. What's a premium? Oh, you'll love it. It's a Buick LeSabre. Wait a minute. I thought premium would be like a Lincoln Town car, you know? Not a chance. I get up there. And that's what they're going to give us. And, and our trunk is full. Our boys are going to go stay with our folks, my folks for a couple weeks. So we had to pack for them. And I mean, we just had the trunk, half the back seat full uh, of our car when we, when we came to pick up the rental car. And I, I said, Lord, I said, this, this just won't work. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's probably going to be the most uncomfortable vacation slash seminar slash ministry, whatever, that we've ever been on. I said, I need your favor. So I go in there. And I talked to the fellow in, in, in Minnesota. It's a booming place. That airport is just busy. And, and uh, I knew they didn't have any vans. So I said to the fellow, I said, hey, you got, anything, you got anything bigger? He said, well, I've got a LeSabre. I said, I, he asked me how many kids. I told him how much luggage. I said, lots. And he says, well, you know, I do have something like a, kind of like a Ford uh, Explorer. I said, yeah, I'll take it. And so I ended up getting this Mercury uh, Mountaineer or whatever and plenty of room. But I drive up to where my friend was who had my car, and he looked at me with this big smile on his face because he knew we were going to get this small car and had to try and cram the stuff in. And I said, Jim, that's the favor of God, loudly. And I'll tell you what, it got some, turned turn some heads because I said, that's the favor of God. You say, that's the favor of God. People go, what? What's the favor of God? <laughs> grocery store, you're going? I mean, I go to the grocery store. She asked me to get something, some cling wrap. You know, cling wrap? Uh, thank you. He held up. Do that again, brother. Will you please. We all look at this. Look at now. He's saying I'm doing a great job. He's saying ten. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <sighs> it diminishes later though. I don't know why it always goes from like ten to five. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that means you're getting too long with it. But I go there and it's on sale. And I say no one's around, or if they are, no one's with me. That's the favor of God. But he says, if you will acknowledge him in all his ways, he will direct your path. Now, I don't know about you, but I want my path directed. And everywhere I go, I just say, Father, I think I am here for a reason. I might be stuck in traffic, and I'll say, Father, I'm here for a reason. I could sit and moan and complain about the traffic and say, oh, man, these people, they're gapers. They're looking at some stupid dead raccoon on the road or something, you know? And they're slowing me down, you know. Or someone cuts me off and road rage, you know. Or I could say, Father, I just thank you. I believe that my path is directed by you. So wherever I am, whatever time it is, that's where you want me to be. I believe I'm in the right place at the right time at all times. You understand? 
and his favor abounds toward us. I'm not kidding, it just comes. Ken knows us very good, almost too good. And ever since I've known him, we've been in financial bondage, it seems like. We, we weren't taught to stay away from credit card. Her folks, my folks, man, you want something, you buy it. If you can afford that monthly payment, get it. Oh, that's so wrong. But regardless, we did it. Man found ourselves in just bondage and debt, okay? And God, in his infinite mercy, began to get favor my way. Hallelujah. And, and, you know, instead of going to see the bankruptcy lawyer, which was very tempting, let me tell you, very tempting, many times, we just decided, God, you, your word works. And you know, he turned our situation around to where in, in, in about, I don't know, a month, month or so, we'll be totally debt-free. Glory to God. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm just no more credit cards, nothing, you, you know. Now, I will have a mortgage on our fourplex that we own, but we live in it, and it costs us like nothing to live there, you know. And I'm not telling you that to, I'm telling you that to brag on the Lord. I hope that doesn't bother any of you. I know I've heard testimonies when I was in, in need financially, and I hear somebody testify, it's like, God, why not me? Well, he will. He absolutely will. Do you understand? He wills that you prosper, but you've got to take time with him. You've got to listen to him. And you have to, you absolutely must acknowledge him. When God does something supernatural in life, I don't care how little, how big, that's right. say, that's the favor of God. Yes. Start speaking, God, I thank you for your favor. What you're doing in my life is awesome. I, I grabbed some offering envelopes. I want to show you something. Take these. How many of you have computers? Anybody? You can make little labels up and stick them on and take a bunch of these with you. And well, this is what my wife and I do with our offering envelopes from our church. We keep them with us. And uh, whenever God does something supernatural in our life, we write a check. We were at a restaurant, and this lady came up to us, and, and, and it wasn't someone who didn't know us. She did know me, but she had no reason to come talk to me about this. And she said, what, what size shirts do you wear? And I said, well, oh, large, extra large, you know, something like that. She said, okay, great. I've got some polo shirts that are really will fit you good. I'm fine, you know. And she asked, what size uh, clothes my son Aaron wore? And we told her, oh, good, I got some to fit then, too. What, uh, what size bed do you guys sleep on? Queen size? Oh, great, I've got some sheets for you. <laughs> so we get out of the restaurant, and she has a garbage bag, two, two garbage bags full. Gives them to me. Just so happens she cleans the house for this guy who's pretty well-to-do. Wears his shirts once or twice and doesn't wear them anymore. And these, a lot of them came back from the cleaner, some of them brand new in the package, but I had 25 polo shirts, and some of them had the tags on 55 bucks each. Glory to God. And my son, we were looking for snow pants. I don't know if you know what those are, but <laughs> we were looking for snow pants for our son. I'm just teasing. And uh, they're expensive. But here was a pair that fit him perfectly, a little bit big, so it would be perfect for winter. And I, I am sure they cost over 100 bucks just for the pants. And if they were used, you couldn't tell. And then there were some other shirts and clothes from my son, and I got some awesome sweaters and things. I mean, it, it, I, I'm sure that I got blessed with about $1,000 worth of clothes. So I said to Taya, that's the favor of God. I got out the checkbook, wrote a check for 100 bucks, offering time, glory to God, and putting it in. And you know what? How many blessings are you believing God for in your life? Well, maybe today I'll, I think I'll have maybe five. You choose. Okay, I'm with you. Here's what happens, guys, and you know this is true. You get blessed, and you think you're going to remember. Come payday, you're going to write that tithe check out, and you think you're going to remember the blessings that God did. But see, he said, acknowledge him in all his ways, and he'll direct your path, and all these things of favor happen in your life, and you forget. Maybe somebody took you out to eat. And I'm not saying you have to give them. You're going to ask God what to give you. Understand, please don't get under bondage or law under this. But I believe that those clothes added $1,000 value to my life. So I wanted to give God, like it says a little further in Proverbs 3, honor him with my first fruits. So I did that, wrote that check. Well, I don't know about you, but, but it's a good idea to carry these with you because every time God blesses you, you can say, glory to God. God, I'm acknowledging you. Thank you for favor. And write out, write out a check. Because, you know, I realize it comes here to the church, but you want to know something that's as you're giving unto the Lord anyways. But you're acknowledging him. You're putting your money where your mouth is. I believe it's Martin Luther talks about uh, four, uh, four steps of, what is that, salvation, I guess. And one of them is your pocketbook. Isn't that something? pocketbook. He recognized that way back then, that men would have a problem with their pocketbook. I want to tell you something. When you give to God's work, we haven't run out of money yet. And it keeps being given to me. Glory to God. And I thank him, and I keep giving it away. I love to, to give. I love to bless people. You understand? I love to bless who, who God wants me to bless. But I want to tell you something. If you are 
uh, in debt today, God will deliver you. If you need healing in your body, God will heal you. Okay? When I came in here, I just sensed the presence of the Lord, a healing presence. Yeah. And, and I remember being in a prayer meeting once, and I had my hands out, and the Lord said, these are healing hands. You know? And I thought, praise God, these are healing hands. And so I realized the Word of God says that the believers lay hands on the sick, but I know God's anointed my hands to heal. That's not me. I never take credit. It's Him. But if you need healing in your body, is that right if we have a little prayer line here, brother? If you need healing in your body today, I'm the kind of person, I lay the cards out on the table. I, I tell on myself all the time in our congregation, our, our kids, I don't care. I've got nothing to be ashamed of. See, Jesus removed all my shame. He's delivered me from pornography. He's delivered me from drugs. He's delivered me from all kinds of stuff. Stuff that was binding me, taking me down the wrong path. God has delivered me. Do you understand? And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of his power. It's right here in this place. And so some of you might have some physical ailments in your body. I just know when I lay my hands on you, Jesus will heal you. Yes. Not a maybe, it's not an if, because healing always comes. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask, if you need healing in your body, you want to be set free today, just form a line up here, would please? I want to pray for you. And I want you to look to me, I want you to look to the Lord. But he supernaturally healed me. And you know, I believe he did it for such a time as this. I believe he healed me so I can go and tell some people about it. And it will lift their faith, pray for them, get them set free. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, anybody I else? Glory to God. God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Just lift your hands toward me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Make sure you lift to Jesus. Lord, Lord, thank you, Jesus. For your your thank you for your healing power. I sent you, my Jesus. word and healed your disease. I am Lord, your healer. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Everybody stand out in the congregation. Stretch your hands out this way. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I send my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You send your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that healeth me. The Lord, my healer, you sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer, you sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord my healer. Praise Jehovah Rapha. Praise Jehovah Rapha. You're my help. You're my healing. You're my deliverer. In you. I trust. Praise 
someone who needs healing in your knee right here and I know uh, Vicki I know you are but there's somebody else that needs healing in your knee come on right up now I don't know where you are I don't know who you are I'm also seeing an elbow I think it's the right elbow well, I don't know what's your having problem I don't know I don't know if it's our, I can't tell if it's arthritis or but whatever if, if you're having trouble in that area come right now in the name of the Lord thank you Jesus Lord let your healing power flow to thee let them flow, Lord. Let it flow. Let it flow. Uh, right jaw. Someone's having some trouble in your right jaw. I don't know what, what's going on in your right jaw. Come on, people. Move. If it's you, move. Come. Come. There you go. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your healing power flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow, Let it flow. Let it flow Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father. Vicki, maybe that is you. I don't know. Father, just let you thank you for your healing, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Jesus. Oh, Father, thank, you Jesus. thank you, thank you, Lord. Do Nancy, sit down and minister to her with that knee a little bit more. Jesus. Thank we bless the Lord. Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Sinus, uh, uh, extreme, some kind of a sinus growth or blockage. Uh, condition sinus extreme sinus pressure thank come you. right now for healing in Jesus name who's having that in Jesus name Lord let your healing power flow right now Father let it flow you are the God that he left me you are the Lord my healer sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and heal my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let me just uh, share something with you real quickly. God has just uh, uh, showed me something in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You don't have to turn there. I just want to share this real quick. I, and, and I don't mean to be dragging this out, but I just really sense uh, the Spirit of God moving me to talk to you about this. It says that, uh, it talks about the spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith according as it, written, as it is written. I believe, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. And I, I want to talk to you about this regarding your healing. Knowing that he which raised up Jesus Christ uh, will, will, will raise us also by Jesus shall be present uh, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sake that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many be, uh, rebound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not. But for the, our outward man perish at the inward man is renewed by, by, day by day. For our light affliction wh which is but for a moment works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I want you to understand something. Sickness is a light affliction. God doesn't even call it a heavy thing. He says it's a light affliction, but it works for us. How does it work for us? Because God's healing power is in us. A light is, affliction is something you just flip off you. You understand? And let me explain how you do that. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, we have that same spirit of faith that Paul's talking about. We believe something, Therefore, we speak. What we speak is what we believe. What we believe is what we see, not in the natural, but the supernatural, the unseen, because faith is the evidence of things what? Not seen. See, we can go home and say, well, you know, it doesn't look like I'm healed. It doesn't matter. What are you looking at? We need to look at the unseen, folks. God wants you to keep that healing, but he wants you to stay in faith.
and say, you know what, I am healed. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care. I really don't care. My mother still had symptoms of high blood pressure, but she didn't care. She still threw the medicine away now. Now, God told her to do that. You understand? And she went and got checked out, and she's fine. She's healed. She's a fireball prayer warrior. But I want to tell you something. God's healing power is always there. When a believer lays hands on you, it's always there. So you can keep it. How you can keep it is by seeing the unseen. you got circumstances, situations in your life staring you in the face every day. That's the scene. But it says, while we look not at the things which are seen. Amen? Amen. Start acknowledging God every day in your life. Start seeing the supernatural operate. And I'm telling you, some great and mighty things are going to happen. I tell you what, I am proud of Pastor Ken and Anson, what's happening in this church. Glory to God. I mean, I've known him for a long time. This man's a man of integrity, super sensitive to the Spirit of God. Been a great example for my life. Helped me out many times. Helped me out at Rhema. Helped me to grow. And I watched them as, as a couple when I was a single man. And I thought, glory to God. God's using these guys. I want to be used like that. So hallelujah. So we love you, pastors. And I uh, love you guys. And, and thanks for the opportunity to share. I'm sorry I hit on a few things. But, you know, I, I have to obey the Lord. And, and I'll have to talk to him. And, and again, you know, I was an idiot before, right? <laughs> love you guys. Bless you. Thank God. Hallelujah. We'll stand this morning. We'll be dismissed. If, uh, is there anyone here that is not right with the Lord? You need to get saved this morning. You need to say, I'm tired of living the way Clay used to live before that touch, and I want to be touched. Is there anybody here today that needs to come and Give your life to the Lord. Or you've been away from the Lord, and you know you've been away from the Lord, out of fellowship with the Lord. You need to come. Let's just take just one minute. Everybody bow your heads for just a minute. Is there anybody here who needs to come and say, and you know what? It's worth staying all afternoon to wait for you if you need to do this. I don't care how many roasts get burned in the oven. You need to get right with